Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, my name is Muama Farmas, toxicologist and safety assessor of personal care product. In this channel, we'll love to talk about skincare ingredients and their safety. If that sounds interesting to you, please don't forget to subscribe and join this community. So today's video is going to be packed with information and it's kind of a summary of what I learned as a toxicologist and safety assessor. Also, this video will equip you with some necessary basic principles in toxicology so you will be protected from fear-based misinformation. So I strongly urge you to watch the whole thing. Before we start with the principle, let's state a few facts about our bodies. First, our bodies are designed to hate any xenobiotic substances, any foreign chemical that is not useful or is harmful, the body tries to push it out. That's why when you take a drug that is considered a foreign chemical, you must take it multiple times a day to maintain the correct dosage that is effective. The second point is that our bodies are equipped with organs that facilitate the previous process of kicking out chemicals. The main one is the liver, which has hundreds of enzymes that works on foreign chemicals to make them easier to be kicked out. Also, your skin has some capacity to do the same. Lungs, kidneys, and skin are exit points where the chemicals leave your body. Just a quick introduction about toxicology. Toxicology as a science is a science that studies the undesirable effect and toxic effects of chemicals. You can consider it as the evil side of pharmaceutical science because pharmaceutical science focus on the therapeutic effect of chemicals and some focus on side effects. But toxicology focus on side effects, toxic effects and undesirable effects. Okay, now with the principle. The first principle I want you to know is the dose makes the poison. It is the code of toxicology and we hear about it a lot online. But what does it actually mean? In simple terms, it means that everything can be toxic with the right dosage. The question is always when is this chemical going to be toxic, not whether it is toxic or not. Because water, oxygen, vitamin and even nutrients can become toxic with the correct conditions. Let's take an example of a drug to understand, then we can switch to something else. Let's go to the whiteboard. Hello everyone and welcome to the whiteboard. I will explain to you an example about the dose makes the poison by getting to know the relationship of dose response curve or the dose response relationship. And we will take an example, a very well-known drug, which is Tylenol or paracetamol, depends where you are located. And now we will start with the dose response relationship that explain that when we increase the dose, usually or most of the time, the response will increase. Okay, let's start with the uh, representing the dose response relationship for paracetamol or Tylenol, which we all know and use as a drug. And uh, we will uh, then jump from there to another example that is more related to skincare, for example, the parapens. And let's start with uh, drawing the two axes, the X axis, which represent the dosage i will put the letter d i hope you can see well and the y-axis which represent the response with the r as a response so a regular do dose response relationship will look something like this it will start with a very uh, low response because the dose is very low here are the minimal dose and here are the max dose so it will, will, the curve or relationship will look something like this. Okay, so what does this curve represent? So in the response, we know that Tylenol is a, a drug for what? For, uh, to help with the pain, with the fever, etc. So we have here the, uh, the beginning or the point where we see therapeutic effect as a painkiller. So here this small area has no effect. So because the dose is so small here, we have no effect yet. But when we cross this line with the dosage, we see the painkiller effect. I will put as a PK effect. And as the dose increase more and more with time, we will reach another limit on the response which will represent 
the toxic effect usually Tylenol is known to be a toxic for your livers it's a hepatotoxic molecule and the 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 what we call here the window between this uh, this point and this point is called when we have the painkiller effect it's called the therapeutic window for some molecule it's a very wide therapeutic window which means it's a very safe molecule or it's a very safe chemical or it's a very safe drug for other type of molecule the toxic effect then this point will be very close to no effect for example it will be something like this so the therapeutic window will be very very small and the drug would be very very dangerous or has a very high risk to cause side effect or toxic effect so what we understand from this curve is that the dose itself moving from the minimum to the maximum if change the effect of the molecule because let's say for paracetamol let's say until this point it's 500 milligram okay and at this point when we cross the the toxic effect is 2000 milligram usually uh, it's recommended for adults to take between 500 milligram to 1000 milligram each six to seven hours so from this relationship we understand that the dose can make it uh, a hepatotoxic or a painkiller so this relationship is so important and it's apply also for toxic chemicals like the we see uh, we hear a lot about that parapens are toxic or uh, sls are toxic or phthalate or whatever kind of uh, chemicals that are being de demonized in skincare you will understand that this relationship will apply to those chemicals as well so when we know this relationship for a specific molecule like paracetamol we know that okay we should give uh, 500 milligram to 1000 milligram each six to seven hours and we shouldn't exceed 2000 milligram in a one dose so that's how we know how the chemical is toxic or not and all this information are derived from animal studies and human studies for drugs but mostly animal study when it comes to cosmetic before the ban so what we understand is that depending on the dosage you take for a drug or are exposed to in a case of a toxic chemical you can have generally three outcomes no effect therapeutic effect or toxic effect the second principle is the route of exposure is key here we will talk about how the chemical is going to interact with your with your body or more specifically where is the chemical entering your body from depending on the chemical itself the seriousness of the route of exposure changes but generally we will look on how much of the chemical will reach your bloodstream depending on the route of exposure the most severe route is iv or intravenous this way is so severe because it's delivered the chemical directly into your bloodstream with no protection whatsoever the second route is intramuscular injection then followed by subcutaneous injection then inhalation then oral and lastly the least severe one is dermal or topical because your skin is an amazing barrier again let's get back to the whiteboard to talk about parabens as an example of what happens to them when you apply them topically okay let's say you apply the product that contain parabens with the allowed dosage so what will happen so let's look at the time dosage or what happens during time when some of those parabens get into your blood and what's what's going to happen so we have here the time or so here the dosage okay so after, when you apply it to the skin some of it will absorb to your blood and because you are applying it on your skin again the absorption would be super slow because your skin is a barrier so with time as the time progress the dosage increase a little bit and then it drops off here why does it drops off because when i said in the at the beginning of the video your body is an amazing uh, organism or an amazing machine to get rid of any foreign chemical because at this point your skin has enzyme that can hydrolyze parapens and get rid of them and also when they reach your liver 
because the parapen will be in your blood and the circulating blood will reach your liver at the end and your liver also will hydrolyze and conjugate parapens and excrete them through what we say the kidney and out of your body so that's what happens when you apply any kind of topically applied chemicals the um, the amount absorbed would be so low okay so let's look what happens in animal studies when it comes to animal toxicity studies when they test parapens it will be the same but the only the main difference is the route of exposure i talked about the route of exposure being very important key again uh, when they fed or feed the uh, mice with parapen what happened is we look at the course or the graph would be orally and orally is more intense or more severe compared to uh, topically because things absorbed way easier when we ingest them so the dosage will be way much greater and it takes a lot of time because because what the dosage is higher so the enzyme needs a lot of time to get rid of parapens so this this increase this very huge difference between the do the amount absorbed topically here this is topically and this is orally from animal studies is why we see the toxic effect maybe the threshold for safety for animals is here and the dosage is way over that line and we see the toxic effect so that is why it's so important the root of exposure gives and when i say the phrase that the root of exposure is key it is because of this so the uh, orally will be very different compared to topically the last principle i want you to know about is that duration frequency and bioaccumulation so let's start with duration of exposure. What does it mean? If you are exposed to an X chemical, let's say topically, the amount of time that the chemicals stay on your skin will affect how much your skin will absorb. The second is frequency of exposure. How many times you are getting exposed by day, month, or year? Again, the higher the frequency, the more of an X chemical will be present in your blood. Lastly, bioaccumulation. It's a property of some chemical to resist your body's ability to kick them out and stay in your system for a long time. So let's say you were exposed to paraben on the daily basis for a short time because you apply a product two times a day and that's it. Some of it will be absorbed. But remember what I said at the beginning of the video, your body is so good at kicking things out. So the enzyme in your skin and liver will break down paraben and then excrete it through your kidney. Thankfully, parapens are not bioaccumulative molecule, so they stay in your blood for a few hours and then they will be out. So as a final message, you need to know a lot of information about a chemical that the principle I mentioned previously require toxicologists to do so. Those few principles will help you understand that a lot of things are taken into consideration while we do a safety assessment for an ingredient. So now you know that dose is so important and that the demonized ingredients are in such low concentration that if you decide to eat those products with those demonized ingredients, you will not get the toxic effect. Just to be clear, please don't eat your skincare product. The second, you know that the route of exposure, which is always typical in skincare, has a very limited risk factor because the skin is a barrier. Lastly, you know what happens when some chemicals enter your body is quickly excreted because that is one of the most important function of your body. And that was my video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some few or new information from it. If you have any question, please guys, remember you can ask me in the comment and I will be happy to answer each of your question. As always, stay safe and I see you in the next one. Bye.